The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes, where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on Earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is an absorbing tale called For Children Only. Mercy Hospital, devoted to crippled children, stands on a hill at the center of one of the larger New England industrial cities. It is morning, and Clyde and Harriet Beatty arrived here two hours ago to pay a surprise call on Alice Richards, daughter of one of their performers. Now they're ready to leave, but have saved a second surprise till last. We do have to go now, Alice, but I think Clyde has something to tell you first. What is it, Mr. Beatty? Well, we've done some rerouting in the circus lately, Alice, and next month we're showing here. You are? Oh, that'll be wonderful. Then I'll be able to see Mother and Dad. You'll probably see them before then, but we have a surprise for you. We'll probably be here three days. And on the afternoon of one of those days, we'll have all the children from the hospital at the circus as our guests. Oh, that will be wonderful, Mr. Beatty. They'll love it. Have you arranged it already? <laughs> yes, Alice. We talked to the superintendent before we came down to see you. He said there'd be about 200 children who could go. Just about that. We're saving you and your friends the best block of seats we have. You'll get all the trimmings, including pink lemonade. And afterwards, we'll see that the children get a chance to visit with the performers. They'll probably enjoy that most of all. <laughs> they probably will. We'll try to see that they enjoy all of it. Well, let's go, Harriet. We've stayed longer than we should already. We'll have to hurry to get back in time. Uh, there's a door at the end of this corridor we can go out, isn't there, Alice? Yes, just at the end there. Oh, I think that's the side we parked on. Well, come on, Clyde. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, Mrs. Beatty. Goodbye, Mr. Beatty, and thank you for coming. That's all right. We love seeing you. Yeah, she's a nice kid. Oh, she's a lovely girl. She's looking better, too. Oh, she'll be all right. It'll be fun seeing all those kids at the circus. Oh, of course it will. They'll have a grand time. Oh, look over there, Clyde. What? Next to your car. Looks as if someone's waiting to speak to you. Oh. Hello there. You're Clyde Beatty? That's right. You waiting to see me? I'm Jeff Thayer. Oh, uh, my wife, Mr. Thayer. How do you How do? You do? For your information, Harriet, Thayer's the man who runs this town. He is the town. You want anything, he's the man to see. Oh. Oh, you're the mayor. Uh, no, not the mayor, Mrs. Beatty. Just the man who picks him out and tells him what to do afterwards. Oh. I understand you're interested in charity, Beatty. What do you mean by that? I've heard things. For instance, I've heard you're routing your circus this way, giving those kids a free show. News travels fast. <laughs> In this town, I make it my business to know the news before it happens. My information correct, Beatty? It's correct, but what about it? Uh, maybe you'd be interested in another charity. What charity is that? I haven't exactly decided. But I thought I'd figure it on the basis of the amount of time you plan to stay here. You expect to stay three days, don't you? We thought of it, yes. Well, three days at $1,000 a day makes $3,000. $3,000 for charity. This is a good circus town. Doesn't sound too steep, does it, Beatty? Beginning to sound to me like a personal charity. Maybe. It's for you, maybe. Don't they say charity begins at home? I've heard the saying, but I'm not interested, Thayer. I've never yet greased palms in order to show my circus, and I don't intend starting to do it now. Okay, Beatty. It's your business. It's up to you to decide. But permits are my business. And without a permit, you don't show here. In that case, I don't show here. Right. Well, no hard feelings, Beatty. Change your mind. Look me up. Well, how low can you get? If you're Thayer, that low. Come on, get in. But what are you going to do? Give in to him? I told you, Harriet, he runs this town. But wait. The children, Clyde. We've given them our promise. What... Look, Harriet, I don't like this any better than you do, but facts are facts. Oh, excuse and... me. Oh, what do you want? I'm Dr. Standish, Mr. Beatty, attached to the hospital. Oh, hello, doctor. You'll have to excuse me for speaking to you like this, but I was trying to catch up with you. Felt I had to tell you what a wonderful thing you've done. I've heard about the treat you've promised the children. Now, we can apply physical therapy, Mr. Beatty, but you can give them happiness, and that's a great deal more important. Well, thank you. That's I... good to hear. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Beatty. I don't want to detain you, just felt I had to tell you that. Okay, Harriet, that settles it. 
I don't know how, but in spite of Thayer and his threats, we're going to put on a show for those kids. We pause for this message. Now back to our exciting Clyde Beatty adventure for children only. Clyde promised Harriet that he would do everything he could to make it possible for the crippled youngsters of Mercy Hospital to attend the circus. So now, a week later, he calls on Jeff Thayer in the latter's office. Hello, Beatty. Glad to see you. Sit down. No, thank you, Thayer. I haven't much time and I'd rather stand. I've had to cut things fine to get away from the circus for this long, and I'd like to get right down to business. I've come to see you about a permit. You should have gone to the city hall. Your city hall. <laughs> right you are. You can have that permit any time you want it, Beatty. Any time, that is, if you decide on that little charitable gift. That's what I've come to talk about. Okay, talk. When I first started out with my circus fair, I said I'd never pay graft money to anyone. So far, I never have. I mean to keep that record clear. And you're wasting your time. You might be persuaded on other grounds. What other grounds? Those crippled kids at Mercy Hospital there. I've promised them a free performance. They're looking forward to it. Do you want to be the one to disappoint them? <laughs> publicity. What? Don't hand me that hearts and flowers stuff, Beatty. You framed that stunt just for publicity. Now listen, Thayer. Now, you look here. And look, there's today's paper. And here's your hospital story, all written up in great style. A story you couldn't buy, and for free. You're doing very well. It's too bad you can't deliver. I didn't give that story out there. You didn't have to. It was a smoother job this way. Now, this is what you had in mind, this beautiful publicity. So don't try to work on my sympathies. It won't go down. I'd like to know what makes a man like you tick, Thayer. Money. Same thing that makes you tick. Can't you believe in a disinterested act of charity? Now, can I? I've never seen one. Keep your eyes closed and you'll never see anything. Okay, Beatty. I'll call your bluff. What do you mean by that? You're so interested in those kids. You care so little about the publicity this story gave you that I'll cut that 3000 exactly in two. Make out your check for 1500 and the permit's yours. No. <laughs> I thought not. I said no graft. Okay, no circus. Maybe I'll find another way. Maybe you will. Don't know what it could be, though. Right now, neither do I. But if there is another way, I'll find it there. And that's a promise. Oh, Clyde, you're late. I expected you back two hours ago. Uh, couldn't help it, Harriet. And a little extra business to attend to. Mm -hmm. Well, I've changed for my act, and I'll tell you all about it. No, you've got plenty of time. Tell me now. What happened with Thayer? Oh... Just about what you might have expected would happen. He wouldn't listen. All he'd do was cut his figure. But I got another idea. Oh, what was that? I went outside his jurisdiction. I spoke to the mayor of Maplesville. Maplesville? That's a suburb just outside town. Oh? Not anywhere near as good a location, but for our purpose, plenty good enough. At least it's close enough to the city for those kids to see their circus. You've actually got the permit? Oh, it'll come by mail tomorrow. Oh, Clyde, I'm so glad. I was afraid... Oh, Mr. Beatty. Oh, excuse me. What is it, Pete? Uh, there was a phone call over at the hotel for you, Mr. Beatty. Phone call? Uh, yeah, I took the message. It was long distance. A fellow named uh, Dodds calling from Maplesville. Maplesville? But Dodds is the mayor, Harriet. Mm. Pete, what did he have to say? Well, I didn't rightly understand the message, but he said you would, Mr. Beatty. Well, what was it? Well, he said everything was off. He said he'd been talking your proposition over with a man named Thayer, and it couldn't be done. Oh. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, that, that's all right, Mr. Beatty. Glad I could help. Well, what is it, Clyde? Checkmate? Or only check? I don't know, Harriet. But it looks like checkmate. Couldn't you have done that this afternoon? Okay. Down, boy. All through. Pete, open the runway. I'm sending Crash out. Yes, sir. Right away. Clyde. Will you in just a minute, Harriet? 
All right, Pasha, out you go. Out. Come on. There you go. Coming, Harriet. Ah, Pasha tried to disobey me this afternoon. I had to teach him he couldn't get away with it. Is there something you want to see me about? Yes. I have a letter here, Clyde. Oh? Who from? It's from the hospital. From Alice. Oh. Oh, I won't read you all of it. But I thought you might be interested in hearing this. Mrs. Beatty, I particularly wanted to tell you how excited all the children are about the circus. You'd think it was the most wonderful thing they'd ever looked forward to in all their lives. Oh, yes. And I have to tell you about little Skippy Davis, one of the boys here. Dr. Standish told him if he could walk even just a step or two, he might be allowed to feed the elephants. And now he's out in the garden trying very hard. It would break your heart to see him. I'm sorry, Dr. Standish, but that's the way it is. Yes, of course, Mr. Beatty. It was good of you to drive all this distance to tell me. Oh, it wasn't so far. We've doubled back toward the east, you know. Then you're quite sure you won't be able to bring us your circus? Quite sure, I'm afraid, Doctor. In fact, it's impossible. I see. Well, I shall have to explain to the children, of course. No. No, that's my job. It'll be unpleasant, but it's my job all the same. I admire your courage. It won't be easy. I... Oh, hello, Alice. You wanted to see me? I heard Mr. Beatty was here. Hello, Mr. Beatty. Hello, Alice. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's good to see you. Won't be long till you're here with the circus, will it? I... I'm afraid I have something to explain about that, Alice. Oh, you have? What is it? Well, Alice, I'm sorry to have to say this. But... Oh, wait. I'm sorry to have to interrupt you, Mr. Beatty, but I do want you to see this. Look here, out the window. In the garden. See him? Hmm? See who? Skippy Davis. I wrote you about him. See how he's holding on and trying to walk? He's been doing that every day, Mr. Beatty. It's so good of you what you've done. If Skippy didn't have something to look forward to, something to make him want to walk... Mm. What's the matter? Did I did I say something I shouldn't, Mr. Beatty? You said something you should. Forget what I told you just now, Dr. Standish. We're going to do just as we first planned. I'll see you later. I've just decided what I have to do. Well, you win, Thayer. I do? Just what are you talking about, Beatty? Here's my check. $1,500 made out to you. Oh, good. Thank you. Decided all that fine publicity about the kids at the hospital shouldn't be wasted, eh? No. No, it wasn't that at all. I didn't want to waste something else. Huh? What's that? Faith and hope. But I don't expect you to understand that, Thayer. Just see that I get that permit by tomorrow morning. After seeing a kid named Skippy Davis, I'm in no mood to be delayed. We continue with the Clyde Beatty Show and our story for children only after this message. Now back to Clyde Beatty again. Anxious to bring the circus to the crippled children of Mercy Hospital, Clyde did the last thing he would ever have expected himself to do. Gave way to the political boss, Thayer, and paid him the bribe money he demanded in exchange for a permit. But 24 hours have passed since then, and with the passage of each of these hours, Clyde has found himself regretting his decision ever more deeply. You don't like giving Thayer that check, do you, Clyde? Would you expect me to like it? Well, don't feel too bad about it. You simply couldn't disappoint the children, could you? Oh, that's the way I felt at the time. If I hadn't, I'd never have done it. But, hey, wait a second. Maybe there's still a way out of this. Harriet, where's our car? I parked it in the backyard. Why? What do you want to do? Drive where there's a phone. But what for? I'm going to call our bank and stop that check. Oh, no, you can't. You just think I can. But there will be furious. I suppose he will, but he won't be collecting bribe money from me, and the kids will still see their circus. Come on. You can drive me to the drugstore at the corner. Beatty, I want to see you, Beatty. What was the idea of stopping that check? 
I had a change of heart there. You'd better have another. I'll make you so confounded much trouble. Will you? you? All right, I'll take the stop order off. The check can go through. Then I'll give the cancel check in the story to the newspapers. Or would you rather I wouldn't? You'll never get a permit to show in my city as long as I live. You're wrong. We're showing there tomorrow. What? You heard me. We're showing there tomorrow. Beatty, you try that and I'll... You'll what? Well, there's plenty I can do. And you know that as well as I do. I warn you, try anything like that and I'll make it cost you. We'll see. I'm going now, but you'll see. That's a warning, Beatty. Try anything like that and you'll regret it. Goodbye. I heard all that. Sounds like you're in for it now, Clyde. Uh, you think so? I'm going to call our lot men. What for? If we're going to show there, we're going to have to have a lot, aren't we? Tell everybody to stay on their toes. When I get back, we may have to move fast. Well, I got him, Harriet. Everything fixed up? He can get us a lot? He's already got it, but we'll have to bring the circus into town by a roundabout route, so we'll have to move fast. Pete! Oh, Pete! Yeah, Mr. Beatty. Get a hold of Sandy. Tell him we'll have to knock down the tops just as fast as we can. We won't have a minute to wait. <laughs> First trucks get rolling. Take the back road into town. Okay, Mr. Beatty. Mary, Mary. Yeah, Are the costumes loaded? Yeah, quick, yeah. Okay, lock up the wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Harriet, yeah, yeah. Harriet, yeah. Harriet, have you checked yeah, the animal cage? Yes, I have. Sir. All right, come on, fellas. we got to make this fast. All right, boys, get those trucks rolling. We can't keep the kids waiting. Come on, boys, let's go. Get at it. Got to get everything set up before daylight. Get that canvas up. Come on, men. Come on. We're all ready to go now, aren't we, Clyde? Oh, ready as soon as the children show up. I wonder what's keeping Thayer. I think it's possible he doesn't know we're in town. Mm, it's possible. After all, we did come by a roundabout way, you know. But if he doesn't know it yet, he soon will. Wait, I think that might... No. Well, that's Dr. Standish coming now. Come on. Let's see how soon we can expect the children. Hello there, Doctor. Oh, hello there. Hello, Mrs. Beatty. Took us a little by surprise, Mr. Beatty. <laughs> I thought we might. Didn't make you any trouble, did I? No, no, not at all, not a bit. The children were delighted. But here they come now. Those are their buses. You say you have men to help them into the tent? Why, yes, of course. Uh, the buses are here, Pete. Tell the boys to get over there and help the kids inside. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Uh, you can go in with them, Doctor. See that they're comfortable. Need anything extra? Just let me know. Well, thank you. I'll do that. Uh, you're not going in now? No. Clyde's expecting... Well, he's expecting uh, still other visitors. One's not so welcome as these. Oh. Oh, I see. I'll go in then. And Again, thank you for all you've done, Mr. Beatty. It's quite all right. Well, no sign of our pal. No, not yet. There's a band. Well, we'll wait another minute or two, and if he hasn't come then, we'll go in. Brady! Who's that? What? Oh, that's Thayer. <laughs> Looks like he's brought half the thugs in town with him. Stopping over there. Come on, let's see what he has to say. <laughs> what he has to say? We could probably hear that if we were over in the next block. <laughs> probably could. Hello there, Thayer. Haven't come to see the circus, have you? You thought you'd put one over me by having your performance in the morning, didn't you? Well, it didn't work. And no one knows better than I do that you haven't got a permit. All right, boys, close up this shop for him. He Just a... a moment, Thayer. Better call off your dogs. He may be making a bad mistake. What? You don't think I'd have done this if I didn't know what I was doing, do you? Well, just a minute, boys. All right, Beatty. Let's hear what you have to say. I don't need a permit. Oh, you don't? If you look at our ordinances, you'll find that any public performance where a charge is made... What public performance? What? This isn't a public performance. It's for those kids from the hospital and for no one else. Even you couldn't get in. Or <laughs> maybe it'd make more sense if I said that you especially couldn't. Now, look here, baby. Just a minute. Furthermore, this is one performance for which we're making no charge. Only those youngsters are inside the big top besides the performers. And we're not charging them one cent. Not even for pink lemonade. So you take a look at that ordinance again, Thayer. Is this true? You're not selling tickets? Not a one. And no one but those kids are in there? No one except the doctors and attendants that came with them. 
What's the idea? You trying to show me up? Not at all. I made those kids a promise. I'm keeping it, that's all. Well, what do you plan to do about it, Thayer? I'm just thinking. <laughs> you go right ahead. You seem to be inside the letter of the law. Uh, that's what I thought. As a matter of fact, I made sure of that, first of all. All right. Go ahead and give your performance. And I'll be seeing you afterwards. I think I'll still have a surprise in store for you, Beatty. I'll be here. Good. See that you are. All right, boys, forget it. Let's go. I'll settle this score later. Well, that's that. I didn't like the way you said that about seeing you after the show, Clyde. Neither did I. But that's three hours away. And I'm afraid I can't worry that far ahead. Come on, everything's clear now. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> How did you like it, Doctor? Oh, we had a wonderful time. We'll be forever indebted to you both, Mr. Beatty. And we thought your act was fine, Mrs. Beatty. Oh, thank you. And I don't know when the children have enjoyed themselves one half so much. But look at them, at their faces. You can see that for yourself. <laughs> yes, they did seem to have a good time. Clyde. What? Over there. There, he's waiting for you. I saw him. Let him wait. Oh, hello there, Alice. Did you have a good time, too? Oh, a wonderful time, Mr. Beatty. I've just been saying goodbye to Mother and Dad. But I have to come over and tell you how much we all appreciated it. I think I told Mr. Beatty the truth about this several weeks ago. I told him then that the hospital could only provide the children with physical therapy, but he could give them happiness. And today he certainly did. Well, goodbye, Mr. Beatty. Goodbye, Mrs. Beatty. I have to be going. Yes, and so must I. Goodbye, goodbye Alice, We'll doctor. see you soon. Well, there we are. A good time was had by all. Now we pay for it. Hello there, Thayer. I've been expecting you. You've been standing over there like the skeleton at the feast. I imagine I have. How do you do, Mrs. Beatty? I want you to take this. Hmm? Take what? My hand. I told you I might have a surprise for you, didn't I? Yes, but what... Well, this is it. I want to shake your hand, Beatty. Nobody ever got the best of Jeff Thayer before. <laughs> but you've proved something to me that I didn't think possible. And that is that something can be done without hope of reward. This affair this morning cost you several thousand dollars, didn't it? <laughs> That's a company secret. I can't tell you. Well, it must have. And I... Well, I've never seen a character like you before, Beatty. And I wanted to remind you that I swing a lot of weight around this whole county. So if anybody starts giving you trouble, you tell them to see me. Well, now, wait a minute. And I... one thing more, Beatty. What's that? When you come back next year... Don't be going to the city hall asking for any permit. Thayer says you don't need one. And I'm still boss of this town. So long. Goodbye, Miss Lady. Well. <laughs> That's what I like about life with a circus, Harriet. Hmm? What's that? You meet so many interesting people. In a moment, Clyde Beatty returns with a preview of our next adventure. Here is Clyde Beatty. When Harriet and I visited a small village in North Wales to see a performing bear we thought might fit into our circus, we had no idea we'd meet a human beast who needed taming. But that was what happened in the adventure I call The Bear. It's a strange story of the Welsh mountains, the black shaft of an abandoned coal mine a devil in human form, and the bear. I'd like to tell it to you next time we meet. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. For Children Only was written by Gibson Scott Fox. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production.